Hey guys, so if you're new here or if you're not, if you want to hear me voice act, head over to our main channel, links down below. And if you don't, this channel's solely for TTS. Um, if you want to know all the details about what's going on, we have a stream up that you can go and watch, but let's just get into the video. As a Gorod, you can't escape death. Death awaits all. Let's go, Dracula. Go insane. Bring me everything I need to thrive. Murder the world, just so I don't have to be hungry anymore. Light thinks it travels faster than anything but it is wrong. No matter how fast light travels, it finds the darkness has always got there first, and is waiting for it. As a Gorod, aka the Nightbringer, Warhammer's Grim Reaper, the Necron's Mortarian, Rapperbringer, has no friends or fucking cheese is one of the main Setan gods in Warhammer 40k alongside the Deceiver and the Void Dragon that is still relevant enough to be talked about. The other Setan gods have been eaten, shelved in a G-dubs corner, or are just hiding in a cupboard somewhere. Spooky story time. The Nightbringer is the Setan most directly responsible for unleashing the Necrons on the galaxy. His feeding on the star in the Necronta home system caused the solar radiation output that gave the Necronta such short cancer-ridden lives. This in turn caused their obsession with death and spurred them to colonize other worlds. These interstellar voyages led to the Necronta encountering the Old Ones, and the disparity in health and lifespans caused the Necronta to resent the Old Ones and wage war against them. All this led to contact between the Setan and the Necronta, and in some accounts the Nightbringer was also the first Setan discovered. Finally, their hatred of the Old Ones and wanting to escape their sickly biology are the two main reasons the Necronta leaders accepted the Setans after to be roboticized into the Necrons. During the War in Heaven, it was the entity that single-handedly enforced the concept of the fear of death or at least the Grim Reaper in the 40k galaxy. The Nightbringer craved worshippers but its followers soon descended into murderous insanity since being in its presence induced horrifying, bloodthirsty visions. He, along with the outsider, another Setan, was infamous for being a team killing fucktard during the war in heaven after he and the outsider were tricked by both the deceiver and Segarach to eat their fellow Setan brethren in order to gain more power. As you can imagine, things did not go too well for the Necrons and the Setan during that incident, making the deceiver one of the biggest walking fuck ups in 40k history. Only species that came into existence after the Nightbringer broke its way into the psyche of all life were spared fear of death. Namely the Orcs. Which is why it's awfully interesting humans fear death and have a Grim Reaper mythos. Consequently, the Nightbringer, alongside the rest of the Setan, save for maybe the Void Dragon and the Outsider, were stabbed in the back by their former slaves, the Necrons subsequently being turned into fucking Pokemon after getting blasted into a million pieces. You can say all you want, but at least Kane was treated with dignity and respect by the Elder after he was shattered by a bajillion pieces unlike the poor Setan who have turned from one of Warhammer's most sinister forces into a fucking joke. To give an idea of how low the Nightbringer has fallen, he got basically stared down by Uriel Ventris who told him to piss off while threatening to blow the both of them up with the Nightbringer realizing Uriel wasn't afraid to die just to make him suffer. To be fair, the Nightbringer single-handedly slaughtered the story's main villains, most of Uriel's squad, cut off his lieutenant's arm and ruptured Uriel's primary heart. And that was prior to the sharding retcon, it's only gotten downhill from there. Maglevrath. Binary. Now this is the plan, get your ass to Mars. I think. And my thoughts cross the barrier into the synapses of the machine, just as the good doctor intended. But what I cannot shake, and what hints at things to come, is that thoughts cross back. In my dreams the sensibility of the machine invades the periphery of my consciousness. Dark. Rigid. Cold. Alien. Evolution is at work here, but just what is evolving remains to be seen. Introduction. Magladrath more commonly called the Void Dragon, or possibly the Omniscia. Comma is one of the main Setan along with the Deceiver and the Nightbringer. He is the most powerful Setan, and is most likely one of the only Setan to have evaded capture by the Necrons has been sharded and enslaved like the rest of his fellow Setan. A full, unsharded Void Dragon would in all likelihood make the ruinous powers shit themselves, which should put his power level into perspective. 
The Void Dragon's divine portfolio includes destruction, mastery over machines, and technology. During the war in heaven his warriors were by far the strongest and they could electrocute fools like the other emperor from Star Wars. He made several gadgets to help shut down our souls who made use of the warp. The pylons formerly keeping the eye of terror in check are the most notable and also the shootiest. It's hard to overstate how insanely powerful Magladrith is. He survived a brawl with multiple blackstone fortresses, of all things. You know, the ones who can cause suns to explode. A weak, small shard of the dragon kicked the absolute shit out of several Necron worlds when they tried to snatch it up. To put how terrifying this bastard is into perspective, the deceiver, who was unafraid of talking to psychos like the Nightbringer and the Outsider and convincing them that cannibalism was a spiffy idea, actively avoid this Balin dragon. Fortunately he is not all powerful. The Void Dragon, like all Satan, is, more, vulnerable to the power of the warp, which is perhaps why the Emperor was able to kick his ass. With the master of mankind confined to the golden throne as he constantly battles the gods of chaos though, the void dragon is probably the most powerful being in the setting. This guy is not to be fucked with. He's also confirmed to be the new focal Cetan in the 9th edition, having had a preview of a Cetan model with wings and a tail. Which isn't at all dragony, of course. He is. Comma this might be bad news for the Imperium given the implication he is connected to as the Omniscia. Either the Void Dragon sides with humanity due to our technological prowess and valiant war against chaos convincing it that we're its best bet for power and victory, or we'll have to fight a war to determine who the true Omniscia is and probably end up with the Elder being slightly shocked we've had a pet Cetan this whole time. Knowing 40k, the event will end with the Astronomicon literally eating the Void Dragon and being absorbed by the Emperor. One of its shard on Maiden World Salentia was unleashed by the Necron Eretep dynasty in M41. It proceed to lay waste to them and dozen worlds. The Cryptex managed to seal it up again. Identity. The Void Dragon, Omniscia, and Dragon of Mars are most likely all the same creature. It helps to compare what we know for sure. The Void Dragon has some kind of supernatural comma power over machines, and his location is unknown. The Dragon of Mars was roughed up by the Emperor before the Age of Strife and sealed inside Mars. The Omniscia is worshipped by the Adeptus Mechanicus as the God of Machines. Worship creates gods, yet somehow the widely venerated Machine God does not seem to exist in the Warp. Cetan think the Warp is just the worst thing ever. So, common phrase, most importantly, Voidy and the Omniscia are both ancient demigods who control machines. Voidy and the Dragon of Mars are both extremely dangerous dragons. Dragon of Mars and Omniscia are both on in of Mars. And what other people think, some of the Mechanicus believe that their cult actually worships the Void Dragon, and treat the Necrons as heralds. The Necrons think something very, very important is inside of Mars, as they suicidally charged straight into Mars. Some CSMs think something deadly and destructive is inside of Mars. You think that all three entities are the same. Also, the mentioned entity could be a warp-based reflection set in motion by the Emperor. The Cetan are unable to exist in the warp, but the myth of Omniscia and the subtle manipulation of machines by the Void Dragon have created a warp god of sorts, kept alive by all the rituals and faith of the Adeptus Mechanicus and many other people who believe in machine spirits and such. If we were to Venn diagram all these facts together, we wouldn't have much in the center for all three entities, but enough exist in the other intersections that any other explanation seems unlikely. With all of these hints piled up, it has become pretty clear that those guys are actually just one guy. The Man of Iron from the Blackstone Fortress Adventures claims to have met the Omniscia, that the Emperor is not the Omniscia, and that the true Omniscia would be disgusted by the Mechanicus. The Necron Lord in the Mechanicus game was disgusted by the fusion of machine and flesh that the Tech Priests are. Perhaps this implies a connection and that the Void Dragon might not approve of their form of worship. However, it should be acknowledged as well that any sort of confirmation of the Void Dragon actually being the Omniscia is far from certain. Seemingly in a spirited attempt to confuse matters further, newer fluff from the latter Horus Heresy novels prior to the Siege of Terror as well as others set in the more current era of the Dark Imperium have delved into this somewhat. In particular, 
Tit Endeath depicts the death of a loyalist titan Principe in the moment that her soul is passing into the ether. Just when it looks as though she will be overwhelmed by warp predators or claimed by chaos, she is saved by the appearance of the the Omniciac, who just so happens to be radiating a glowing golden aura. Again, this is in the warp, and the golden aura welcomes the soul of one who died in his service, into his domain. Who does that sound like? And not to belabor the point, but to be frank, for all intents and purposes, gold plus warp equals big E. It's also made clear both in a few of the Siege of Terror novels but many more set following the return of Gillum and that the vast majority of the Mechanicus at large truly regard the Emperor as the Omniscient, not the least of whom being none other than Belisarius call himself, and while there are as ever eccentric outliers, they are very much in the minority. While not definitive proof of course, it's worth noting all the same. That's awkward. This has profound and also profoundly weird implications that get weirder the longer you examine them. The first is that the Adeptus Mechanicus are heretics of the highest level, which they already basically are since they actively try to be as far from their own sacred humanity as possible, at least chaos represents normal human traits only taken to dark extremes, and Xenos aren't human in the first place so according to the Imperium are already inherently bad, who worship an actual Xenos demigod. The second and perhaps even worse possibility is that machine spirits are the working of the dragon, suggesting that he is a big part of what even allows Imperium technology to work. Or, perhaps if he's having a bad day, to not work. Of course the implications are even worse for the Dark Mechanicus, since being a chaos worshipping cult who just found out that your god hates chaos would generate quite the cogitator dissonance. So if the dragon woke up and decided to lay the crackdown on the Imperium, the best case is that the Imperium would lose a bunch of the guys who make and repair their tech along with control of Mars. The worst case scenario is that all of their complicated machinery would start attacking the men of Iron 2, Electric Boogaloo. Strangely, this means that the most powerful user of physical forces and the most powerful user of psychic forces are imprisoned almost right next to each other. This also means that the Corpse Emperor's fancy life support machine is a stone's throw away from a being who could probably turn it off with a thought, except that presumably the Emperor is psychically protecting it. This might not be as grim dark as it first appears, while the dragon might just be super pissed and waiting for an opportunity to press the eject button on the golden throne, in the long run the dragon has more to gain from protecting the Emperor. As we know, the Emperor is holding back the forces of chaos and the Cetan despise chaos above all else. So grab some popcorn and sneak into the Imperial Palace to see if some seriously weird cooperation takes place. It is also likely that the only reason Big E's golden toilet continues to function is because good old VD has realized the fact that Ems currently functions as a cork for an infant eye of terror and as such as deemed it a bad idea to try offing him because the consequences of such an action would most likely result in him getting buttfucked by the forces of chaos. Or it is legitimately supporting mankind, because Ems made a deal with it to give its followers immunity to inquisition. But the sad truth is that the VD is making sure the Golden Throne flushes only to prevent Sigma shit from overflowing into 40k. Speaking of Sigma this relationship seems an awful lot like a grimdock one of Sigma and his dragon friend. Perhaps it wasn't the mechanic and the Emperor went to Mars to recruit. And he did visit the Void Dragon while there. The Emperor knows how to use belief and ritual to create warp entities and could probably tie that to the Void Dragon protecting it and giving it access to the warp in exchange for fealty. Babasitter. On a more derpy note, for some reason it can talk to human children, like Gamera, and sometimes involuntarily gives them power to heal and manipulate machinery. So, The Void Dragon might secretly be in fact be the guardian of children all along? Just picture a cosmic being from beyond conventional science having a soft spot for kids would generate much lulls and pedophile jokes on TG. Or maybe, just maybe, humanity earned his favor with the dark age of technology and the machine cult. Considering his powers. Which would be wonderfully hilarious. Even the laughing god would be amazed at such a cosmic joke. Binary. We play games every now and then. If he'd just offer me some breakfast, not soul stardust is fine thank you very much, I'd fix his little gold tollied. And why is that surprising? They did. Gork air. 
What's this about machines and potties? Silence green skin. I Kato Sicarius shall never let calamity befall our glorious god emperor. Do you get it? Of course you don't. You're not a tech priest. Fucking flashbag. No tabletop RPG is complete without beautiful models on the table and the best place to get models is from us. If you check the link below we have everything you could need for your magical realm. Only the finest of big titty wafers here. But if you're not into models or don't play with models we got you covered with subclasses such as the Gachimashi Wizards, the Simp Warlock and the North FC Fighter. Also we have started selling 5th edition adventures with our first one featuring Belle Delphine, the succubus that has poisoned the town's well and turned the villagers into simps. If any of that stuff sounds fun to you go ahead and check the link below but let's get back to the video. Mephatron. Hello there my little puppet. I am not saying anything, I am screaming. In the midst of this galactical shit cacophony that these spoiled, entitled planet spawns have rung out. I am the only one screaming out against the fate this galaxy is encroaching upon. Lies cannot succeed without some perception of honesty. Introduction. Mephatron, more commonly known by such nicknames as the Deceiver, the Jackal God, the Golden One, the Almighty Golden Six Pack, straight up an idiot, Todd Howard and the Master of Trolling is the Necron's answer to its siege, and Segarach's best drinking buddy as well as something of an XP of Nyarlathotep. He is one of the main Setan gods with some relevance alongside the Nightbringer and the Void Dragon. He is known as one of the greatest trolls of Warhammer and is actively competing with Tsinch and Segarach on who can pull off the greatest lulls. He alongside the aforementioned two are some of the key players of the Emperor's Super Psychic Cosmic Eternal Strip Poker and has been at this game since the days before even the stars had formed and all the other players were little more than scattered high energy particles in the first epochs of the universe after the Big Bang. During the war in heaven he alongside Segarach made a deal with each other on creating a plan so dickish and so trollish that it would help break the universe itself. The plan was to convince the Nightbringer and the Outsider as well as the other Setan gods that if they ate each other due to their immense powers, they would stand on top as the greatest beings in the galaxy. Of course being the idiots that they are, the other Setan gods completely fell for it. With the old ones essentially beaten at this point and the Setan squabbling for the spoils, the Necrons, with Zarek tired of all the horror of the galaxy's greatest war, ashamed that he sold his people's souls, and seeing that reality was splitting at the seams as the Setan and old ones tore apart the Materium and the warp decided he had to do something if they were to have a future beyond being the slaves of Lovecraftian gods. As the Setan were busy eating each other and the armies of the old ones cowered and hid, Zarek went fuck this and shattered the remaining Setan into pieces with an unknown weapon that was said to cause damage to the very fabric of reality itself after slaughtering the remaining old ones, ridding the galaxy of the influence of both factions of gods. The Deceiver is claimed by some to be shattered alongside his Setan brothers which he possibly did not intend and possibly spends the remaining of his life being mocked by the giant bluebird and the laughing clown. On the other hand he may have pulled up a dastardly move that possibly fooled everyone into thinking that he was turned into a glorified Pokemon of the various contacts shenanigans between him and the Iron, Elder, Blackstone Fortresses, Failbadden and others are reported as truth. The last possibility is that getting shardered was intentional because it now means that he can be in a billion places at once. Battlefleet Gothic Armada seems to hint that his sharding was actually a deception and that he's very much fully functional. Deception from the deceiver? Who would have guessed? Though to be fair, what better way to have a free hand to manipulate the galaxy than for everyone to be convinced you're no longer a factor at play? A significantly powerful shard pretended to be one of the missing Alpha Legion Primarchs but its deception was rumbled by an equally sneaky exiled Necron and everything went tits up. He also plays Paradox Billiards Vostro and Roulette 4th Dimensional Hypercube Chess Strip Poker with the Emperor, Tsinch, Segarach, and Creed. Accomplishments. Magnificent Golden Six Pack. Convinced his brother Setan to eat each other. Spearheaded the Necron to being roboticized into Necrons. Manipulated a society, though there was no mention of its species, called the Sylvie into worshipping him so that they could be turned into Necrons. They ended up getting purged but such was of little consequential loss to him. 
has been secretly manipulating the Imperium of Man's hierarchy through shape-shifting. A Kaladus assassin was sent to kill him, in his guise as a governor after committing a fair deal of heresy, but failed as she stabbed him, only to find to her horror that he simply absorbed her seat and phase sword as if it were a lost part of him returning home. To add insult to injury, the deceiver commented on how the Kaladus polymorphine drug gives human essence such a delicate flavoring and sent her soul and shame to the afterlife. Gives Abby an awesome demon stick so that not only it will be even harder to sindri him, he will continue to be manipulated by the deceiver. Possibly started the Gothic War 12th Black Crusade by telling Abby about the Blackstone fortresses while disguised as a crone, or the old crone was Moriana and she was informed about the fortresses by the deceiver. This was done to take the powerful warp weapons out of the picture so that they could not be used against the Setan, like him in the future while also weakening the Imperium of Man at the same time by having the Traitor Legions and Imperium bleed each other dry. Further supported by the ending of the Battlefleet Gothic, Armada game, which also gave him his first ever bit of voice acting. With the Void Dragon sealed in Mars, the Deceiver is now the most powerful Setan despite being shattered into pieces. Despite this should even a few shards combined together. The Deceiver. Binary. Nyad Razatha. I am the fire that will cleanse the arrogance of the old ones. Hada Hada Ha. Introduction. Nyadrazathar aka the Burning One, the Human Seat and Torch, Flaming Six Pack, Pyromania Fan One, Kane Secret Lover. Clang. You dare sully my name with this mockery of divine fire. You shall burn in my wrath. Ayum. Back on topic. The Burning One was one of the Setan gods and the one responsible for telling the Necrons how to break into the Dolmen Gates and the Webway to trash the old folks home during the war in heaven. And if you have guessed, the dude's a fucking pyromaniac, as in, he could rival the Salamanders on ways to copulate with fire. I wouldn't be surprised if he jerks off at pictures of burning corpses. Like all other Setan, the Burning One was shattered into a billion pieces and used as Pokemon by the Necron forces. Hell, a shard of Nardrazatha was later discovered by Traz in the infinite on the world of Majadia. Don't ask how a shard landed on one of the planets of the Fenris systems. Of course in order to get there trolls in needed to fight off the space furries in order to get to his collection. In the ensuing battle, Traz in raided the world and was able to acquire the shard. You could say that the burning one would be the Setan equivalent of Charizard. If Sir Charizard had the power to almost literally shrug of a bombardment from and then proceed to crack open and cook from the inside, a tyrannid high elephant with its bare, godly hands. And if it was the case it would explain why Trollzin was so eager to get his hands on one. The Silent King also has a shard of Nyadrazantha, which he uses to power his dais of dominion and personal weaponry in addition to wearing its skin like a cape. He also uses its raw power to tear open the webway whenever he wants as a personal dolmen gate. What a badass. Tseranoga. If ever you see something terrifying, remember there is always something much, much worse. Tseranoga, more commonly known as the Outsider, is one of the Setan, along with the Nightbringer, responsible for consuming many of its brethren during the war in heaven. In the Outsider's tragic case, it was tricked by Segarach instead of the deceiver, into believing that it would gain the power to rule over the material universe after cannibalizing its brethren. Fuck knows why a Setan would even listen to one of the elder deities at all. Additionally, Setan consciousness is apparently so potent that a fragment of each consumed deity's consciousness still remained within the outsider. It is not known whether the outsider is a dude or a chick. However, of the few fan artworks we have of the outsider, it seems that almost all of them like to imagine it with dreadlocks, like a psychotic Robo Bob Molly or even as a hot chick, or some kind of immense dragon leviathan like creature, rather than taking on a humanoid form. May or may not be a Slavic king, Tseranoga. More likely than not named after the Lovecraftian god Sothogua. The big goof. The disjointed thoughts of hunger and half-formed memories of pain constantly claws at Serenoga's mind and eventually drove it insane with guilt and rage. It may just be all of the consumed Setan nagging it on how much of a dumbass it is for fucking them over and turning them into Pokemon. In a fit of self-loathing, the outsider fled the known galaxy in a self-imposed exile, much like the Silent King, actually.
with its eternally tormented mind turned inward. The outsider's body drifted inert in deep space for millennia, eventually accumulating stellar debris and various exotic minerals, forming a planetoid with the outsider at its core. A dark planet, floating in the infinitely dark space between galaxies. But before everybody starts feeling sorry for this thing, do not forget that all Setan are immense and extremely powerful entities capable of warping space-time around them. Yet the outsider was strong enough and power-hungry enough to omnum them all but a handful of them. Its power was so great that it had a hellish presence, and the energy bleed of all the other Setan it had consumed caused madness in all who came close to it. Many killed themselves rather than face the outsider. Chaos wishes it could inspire this amount of madness. While it cannot match the Nightbringer for pure force, or the Deceiver for guile and cunning, the Outsider is rumored to be the most deadly and dangerous of the remaining Setan. This is probably because the rest of the Setan gods are divided and Pokemon, or dead, and the Outsider is the last intact Setan, especially after 9e revealed the Void Dragon has also been sharded. So if the Outsider ever returned from its exile, the galaxy would promptly shit a metric fuckton of bricks. What else would happen when an extra galactic immortal ethereal entity of overwhelming power that consumes minds and destroys sanity itself returns for more? Be afraid. Be very afraid. Is it the fucking bug lord? There have been rumors going around the Inquisition that the outsider is somehow involved with the whole Tyranid affair, and some even claim that it is actually the Tyranid's hive mind. Of course such notion is not only heresy in the extreme but also quite stupid, as the outsider has been pretty explicit in not being too interested in galactic affairs after the Fratrophagy incident. Plus it would make no sense for a Setan god to invest in biological engineering. For all the talk of being the masters of evolution, the Tyranids have been shown recently to not be so infallible as once thought. There are multiple Imperial reports of entire Tyranid Hive fleet starving to death because they could not find suitable biomass in time. So why the outsider would decide to create a powerful but flawed biological race when its buddies down the block were creating the sheer ape machines that are Necrons and their subsidiary rape machines, such as their tank one-shotting, armor melting, atom destroying, house cleaning, homework helping, tax doing, blowjob giving guns, is unknown. Maybe because it's crazy? All that is known at this time is that more speculation is needed. Well guys hope you enjoy today's video. We are going to assume you have if you have stayed to the end. Consider subscribing and clicking the notification bell if you really enjoyed it to stay up to speed with any and all new videos. Also check out the links below to our shop for some fat ass titties and our sponsor Rural and be sure to use a promo code at checkout so they know we sent you and you'll get 10% off. And until next time.